Funky music. Hello, this is Dan Ritchie of Project Dog Waffle Howler, and uh, since Philip has been doing some tutorials on uh, working with a uh, an asteroid, I thought I would uh, do something similar working with uh, Blender to render out some uh, frame sequences that can then be loaded into a uh, custom brush that can be uh, painted or rather an animated brush uh, and you can do a number of these with, uh, things with these things which uh, Philip has covered in his video so I'm gonna start with Blender to uh, create this uh, this animated um, sequence and uh, this will basically be an introduction to Blender uh, I myself am a Lightwave user from way back I uh, started with uh, when it was Videoscape 3D and uh, Modeler was a separate package um, back on the Amiga. Uh, so I'm loading up the um, loading up a default uh, default project here, and I'm going to uh, start with the basics. Um, the first thing I noticed when I started using Blender is the uh, the interface is a little takes a little getting used to. Um, but uh, we're going to start with uh, with this basic cube shape here and then transform this into a sort of an asteroid shape. So I'll start over here. Um, this is the default configuration of Blender. Um, if you look over here, there's a scene graph, or I believe they call it a, um, uh, let's see, an outliner in, the, in Blender. And this basically contains all the uh, a graph of all the uh, objects and lights and cameras and that sort of thing in in the project. Uh, as you can see here, I can select that cube shape right there, and if you expand this or telescope this out, you can uh, click under there, and that will be the uh, the actual mesh, the object um, geometry part of that object. Uh, and once I have that we can go and add uh, some modifiers to this so if you look in this uh, the second menu down here on the uh, on the right there's a number of little tabs here and there's one called the object modifiers I'll expand that a little bit so we can see it better it looks like a little wrench I'm gonna go there click on add modifier and here there's a uh, subdivision surface modifier which we're gonna use and that will basically subdivide that that box into a uh, a uh, larger number of um, vertices and that sort of thing. I'm going to change the number of ver uh, subdivisions. Um, there's a separate number for the view and for rendering. Um, this way you can change, um, maybe have a smaller number for your while you're working on the object, then render it a higher quality. But we're going to, for the sake of what we're doing, we're going to set it to the uh, same number for the rendering and for the view. I'll put it on four, and that should be probably enough. Maybe I'll do five. That should be plenty. I think four was enough actually for what we're doing. And that uh, that actually has actually subdivided that box down into a almost a sphere at this point. Okay, now that we've got that, I'm going to close this. There's a little. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, that closes it. Okay, and I'm going to add another modifier to this. Let's see. Right here where it says add modifier, and I'm going to find the one that says um, under deform here that says, uh, I believe it's called displacement. And now that I have that, I actually need to go and make a texture that we're going to displace this object with. So I'll gonna go over here to where it says. Um, textures. Uh, there's already one that's in there that's been defined so all I have to do is select the type and I'll use, uh, I think there's one called cloud and I'm just going to use the default settings for now. We can come back and change this later. So let me go back to that mount, that tab where we had the modifier. Um, I'm going to select here where it says browse texture to be linked. There's that one texture we just made. And there's another button here that says uh, user use modify move, use modifier while in edit mode. I'm going to click on that, and you can see that's already applied that texture to this object. 
Um, this is applying the uh, this texture to the surface uh, normals. Uh, you can apply it, apply it to X, X, Y, or Z, or to some other parameters in there. But I'm going to keep it on normal, and that actually kind of makes each of the uh, each of these faces on this object we have kind of scale according to that texture we have. Um, there's some other other things you can change, like the strength parameter. And uh, you notice this is all happening in, in real time, and we can see exactly what's happening. So it makes it pretty easy to work with. Um, and we could stop there. One thing we can do to this uh, that will help right now is drag on this uh, left side. There's some uh, parameters to this mesh where it says mesh tools. Drag that down, and you can see where it says shading, and hit the smooth button there, and you'll see it uh, it smooths that out for us. And we could probably stop right there for the uh, for the sake of this uh, tutorial. Um, there's a lot more I'd like to do with that. Uh, for example, changing this uh, this texture. For example, uh, let's see where it says colors here. Changing the contrast, for example, would. Uh, let us play with that in, kind of in real time, see, seeing exactly what we get as we mess with it. And there's a lot of things you can mess with uh, here. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Now, it would be useful to keep this uh, as it is, where you can make it dynamic changes to it. But since we're just making a simple animation, I'm going to go ahead and um, apply these modifiers, and that way it'll become part of the geometry of what we're working on. So I will uh, first apply these, and it says I can't do that while we're in edit mode, so I'm going to go ahead and go out of this uh, mesh and just click back on this cube object, and then I'll hit apply, and then it works fine. And since we've done that, that, that has now become part of our geometry of this object, and we don't have to uh, work with those modifiers anymore, and I'll show you that uh, here somewhere is a uh, as a uh, menu that lets you show uh, wireframe different solid texturing and that kind of thing uh, how that how that's displayed on screen uh, now that we have this object I'm just gonna give it some simple shading let me go to this uh, tab that says material and I'll just do something very basic here, something that looks also pretty good, where it says subdivision, scat uh, subsurface scattering. I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to turn that on by hitting that little checkbox. And I'm just going to use one of the presets, uh, say the one for whole milk. It should give us a quality similar to uh, cream or milk or something like that when we render this. Um, other than that, there's really nothing more I'm going to do to the, uh, the look of this object for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make an animation of this. So I want to go to here where it says view, toggle quad view. Now we can see a couple different views of this. Uh, this one over here is our camera view. Um, and basically all we want to do for an animation of this is first I want to scale this up a little bit because it's not taking up much of this uh, view space here. So I believe I hit S on the keyboard. That lets me scale this. That should be good enough for now. And I want to make an animation of this tumbling in space. So basically I'll make say 100 frames, or maybe just for now, maybe like 30 frames. And that will become our image sequence for, for later. So down here is this little timeline that lets us scroll through our animation. I'm going to start on frame 0. Uh, I'm going to create a keyframe for this. So we do that over here on this panel. There's a uh, since we have this object selected, there are the object tools. One of them is uh, for keyframing, where it says keyframe, hit insert, and rotation. That creates a keyframe there. Now I'm going to go to, um, let's say, frame 30, right there. I'm going to scale this down a little bit so we can see, our, uh, see that in the timeline a little better. So I'm on frame 30 and I want to make this rotate 360 degrees when it goes uh, gets to frame, frame 30. So uh, let's see, over here there should be a numeric 
way to enter uh, coordinates. I believe it's under um, one of these. <laughs> right, that's the one called object where it says rotation. We're going to enter on the, I think it's the Z axis we want. Let me, let me see. Oh, <laughs> no, it's not the Z axis. Let me undo that by pressing Ctrl Z. Let me try the Y axis and see what happens. No, nope, that's not it. Must be the X. Okay, X axis. I want to make this negative 360 degrees. I'll just type that in. And hit tab. And now that we have that, I'm going to go ahead and key, create that keyframe for the frame frame 30 there. So insert, rotation, and that should be our animation. That is it. So when we render this, we'll have a uh, object tumbling from there to there. And uh, there is another thing we can do. As you can see, that's kind of not r rotating in a linear fashion. I actually want to go to the graph editor and uh, the thing about Blender is it's kind of um, tricky to work with the interface. You have to uh, make a new window and uh, you can pretty quickly get, uh, get confused <laughs> with all the windows and things you can open up here um, and that is something you just have to come to grip with uh, by using it. So I'll just kind of I'll put that 3D view back there. I'll try to anyways. Let's see. Well, anyways, <laughs> uh, we'll get there eventually. And I wanted to go to the graph editor, which is well, there's a 3D view. <laughs> See if I can do this. All right, now I pull down another one of these, and I'll make that the graph editor. And that gives me oh boy. <laughs> well, it's easy to get confused in this program sometimes until you really come to grips with it. Um, and this lets me uh, work on those curves. Kind of manually man manipulate those curves that we have we were working with there. There we go. As you can see, this isn't a straight line. This is kind of in a curve. So I want to take this and um, select all. And um, let's see, where it says key, I believe. Interpolation mode and hit linear there. I have to make sure I have everything selected that I want. Yes, there it goes. All right, where do I do? Key. Interpolation mode linear. Now you see that's just a straight line. That'll, that'll be just what we need for that animation. So now I'll go back to that 3D view. Let's see, 3D view. And you can actually merge these. Once you've got all these windows open, you can actually merge them back. Uh, if you right click on it, and it'll say join area, and you just click there. And now I've got that back kind of the way I had it originally. And that takes a little getting used to. <laughs> I'm still just starting out in this program myself. Uh, and I'll go back to that uh, toggle quad view again. We should see our animation of our uh, asteroid tumbling in space. And uh, in the next tutorial, I'll, I'll finish this by rendering out some frame sequences and, and that sort of thing. So uh, see you then.